Hey, tech enthusiasts! Welcome back to Business Meets Tech, where we unravel the mysteries of tech one video at a time. Today, we're diving deep into the key algorithms that make machine learning tick. Whether you're a seasoned data scientist or just starting, understanding these algorithms is crucial. So let's get started. First up, we have linear regression. Imagine you're trying to predict your monthly electricity bill based on the number of people in your house and the average temperature. Linear regression is like fitting a straight line through your data points to predict continuous values. Picture a scatter plot with your data points. Linear regression aims to find the best fitting straight line through these points. This line, called the regression line, helps us predict future values. The formula looks something like this. Here, Y is the predicted value, X is the input feature, B0 is the intercept, and B1 is the slope. The algorithm learns the best values for B0 and B1 to minimize the difference between the predicted and actual values. Example, let's say you're a real estate agent trying to predict house prices based on size. By plotting house sizes on the x-axis and prices on the y-axis, linear regression helps you draw a line that best predicts prices for given sizes. Next, we have decision trees. Think of a decision tree as a flowchart for making decisions based on certain conditions. It splits data into branches based on feature values, ultimately leading to a decision or classification at the leaves. Imagine you're a doctor diagnosing patients based on symptoms. The root node might ask, does the patient have a fever? If yes, you branch out to the next node. Does the patient have a cough? Each node represents a decision based on an attribute, and each leaf node represents an outcome. Example, suppose you're deciding whether to play tennis based on the weather. The decision tree might start with the root node asking, is it sunny? If yes, the next node might ask, is the humidity high? Based on these decisions, you reach the final decision of playing tennis or not. Moving on to k-means clustering. This algorithm is used for unsupervised learning, which means it deals with data without predefined labels. K-means aims to partition the data into k-distinct clusters based on feature similarity. Imagine you're sorting a collection of colorful candies. You don't have any predefined groups, but you want to group them based on color similarity. K-means works like this. Initialize, choose K-random points as initial cluster centroids. Assign, assign each data point to the nearest centroid. Update, calculate the new centroids by averaging the points in each cluster. Repeat, repeat the assign update steps until the centroids no longer change significantly. Example, suppose you own a retail store and want to segment your customers based on their purchase behavior. K-means can help you group customers into clusters like frequent buyers, seasonal shoppers, and one-time purchasers. This helps in targeted marketing strategies. Next up is Support Vector Machines, or SVM. This powerful algorithm is used for classification and regression tasks. It works by finding the hyperplane that best separates the data into different classes. Imagine you're sorting apples and oranges in a 2D space based on their features like weight and color. SVM finds the line in 2D, or hyperplane, in higher dimensions, that best separates the two classes with the maximum margin. This margin is the distance between the hyperplane and the nearest data points from each class, known as support vectors. Example, suppose you're developing a spam email filter. SVM can help classify emails as spam or not spam, by analyzing features like word frequency, sender information, and email structure. Finally, let's talk about neural networks, the backbone of deep learning. Neural networks are inspired by the human brain and consist of layers of interconnected nodes or neurons. They are particularly powerful for tasks like image and speech recognition. A neural network typically has three types of layers. Input layer, takes in the features of the data, hidden layers, perform transformations and computations on the input data. Output layer produces the final prediction or classification. Each connection between neurons has a weight, which gets adjusted during training to minimize the error in predictions. This process is called backpropagation. Example, suppose you're developing a handwriting recognition system. You feed images of handwritten digits into the network, which processes the pixel values through multiple layers to finally recognize the digit. Random forest is like a forest of decision trees. It's an ensemble learning method, which means it combines multiple models to improve performance. Instead of relying on a single decision tree, 
Random Forest builds several trees and merges their results for more accurate and stable predictions. Example. Imagine you're predicting whether a patient has a particular disease based on various medical tests. Instead of one decision tree, Random Forest creates multiple trees using different subsets of the data and features. It then aggregates their results to make the final prediction, reducing the risk of overfitting. Principal Component Analysis, PCA. PCA is a dimensionality reduction technique. It transforms the data into a new coordinate system, where the greatest variances by any projection of the data come to lie on the first coordinates called principal components. Example, suppose you have a data set with dozens of features, making it hard to visualize and analyze. PCA helps reduce the number of features while retaining the most important information, making it easier to understand and work with the data. Conclusion, understanding these key algorithms is essential for anyone diving into the world of machine learning. They form the building blocks for more advanced techniques and applications. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to Business Meets Tech for more tech insights and tutorials. Leave a comment below with any questions or topics you'd like us to cover next. Until then, keep learning and stay curious. Thanks for watching. Follow us on social media for updates and stay tuned for our next video. See you next time.